Shalom, my name is Leontine Cohen Pauka and I'm a licensed tour guide in France and Israel. During this Corona period I decided to make a short series of movies about subjects related to Israel. Now my favorite subjects are people, food and wine and in this movie I combine two, the family history of Hila and wine. Did you know that Israel has become the producer of some of the best wines in the world? And did you know that one of the best winemakers in Israel is a woman? Hila Dahan Ben Gera owns a small winery called Somek in Zichron Yaakov with her husband Barak. Hila's family history and life is fascinating and unique. Let me tell you her story. First, we are going to Holland. Hila's grandmother, Goni van Oosten, was born in Assen in 1924. Assen is a small city in the northeast of Holland. Her father, Abraham van Oosten, was a famous architect. In the city of Assen, you can still see some of the houses he built. They have become protected historical buildings because of the unique mix of traditional and modern style and because of the use of stained glass windows. Abraham was also asked to design the stained glass windows for the local synagogue that was built in 1932. He died five years after the completion of the synagogue. When Goni was 17, she joined a Zionist youth movement. She went to a training center for young Jews. It was an educational farm where she and other youngsters were trained to become farmers. In this farm, they were prepared for future immigration to Palestine and they were taught agriculture. There she met a young German Jew of her age, Asher Gerlich, who shared her dream of immigrating to Palestine. But in 1940, the Germans occupied Holland, and in 1942, the Jews from Assen were rounded up. Goni, her mother and siblings, as well as Asher, were arrested and sent to Westerbork, the Dutch transit camp. There, Goni and Asher married. The two of them were sent to the German concentration camp Bergen-Belsen, where they managed to survive. In April 1945, just before the end of the war, the Germans put them together with a large group of prisoners on what is known today as the Lost Train. This train was sent throughout Germany. The Germans planned to use the Jews in the train as exchange prisoners or put them to slave labor somewhere in Germany. Because the Soviet army had entered Germany, the train drove many days throughout Germany without a destination. Eventually, the train was stopped and the Soviet troops liberated everybody that was in the train. Goni and Asher were finally free. When Goni came back to Assen, her hometown, she found out her mother and siblings had been murdered. She was the only person of the family that survived and a year later, Goni and Asher immigrated illegally to the Promised Land. Upon arrival, Goni changed her name to Tamar, meaning palm date, and together they took the family name Ben Gera. So from now on, they were Tamar and Asher Ben Gera. They joined a small group of soldiers of the Palmach, a special force of the Haganah, the Haganah was the predecessor of the Israeli army and they helped build a kibbutz called Beit Keshet. A kibbutz is a collective community based on agriculture. The name Beit Keshet means the house of the bow. It comes from the book of Samuel where it says, teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Beit Keshet is located in the Lower Galilee region, east of Nazareth. Tamar and Asher had seven children and remained their whole life in the kibbutz. The kibbutz offered them stability, a community and a world view, things that they had lost in the war. One day, Tamar was contacted by the city of Assen, where she was born. She was told the synagogue was sold to the Protestant church because there was no Jewish community in Assen anymore. 
The city offered the stained glass windows to Goni as her father had designed them. The stained glass windows were sent to Israel and installed in the communal dining room of the kibbutz. Recently, the windows were taken out as the dining room was not in use anymore. Hela and her family decided to offer the windows to Yad Vashem, the Israeli Shoah Memorial. Let's go back to Hila's story. In the 1970s, her father, Uri, met a young Australian woman who came to work as a volunteer in the kibbutz. They fell in love and married. They lived in the kibbutz and one of their children, Hila, was born there in 1976. Hila grew up in the kibbutz where she lived with her family until she was 12. As it was still a tradition in those days, she lived with the other children of the kibbutz in the children house. She would spend a few hours every day with her parents, but her daily life was with the educators and the children of the kibbutz. The philosophy of the kibbutz was that children should not grow up with the parents. The parents worked for the kibbutz and were relieved of taking care of the children. The children would visit their parents every day for a few hours, but they lived, ate and slept in the children house. Eventually, this way of bringing up children was abandoned. Today, there is no kibbutz with the children house in Israel anymore. Hela was raised to become a kibbutznik, which means a kibbutz member, and from a young age she was interested in agriculture. After her army service, Hila studied agriculture. One summer she was working as an intern in the vineyards of the Carmel Winery in Zichon Yaakov. There she met Barak, one of the workers of the vineyards. Barak's family owned vineyards in the region Ramat Hanediv since 1882 and they had always sold all their grapes to the big Carmel winery. Barak and Hila fell in love and decided to open their own winery. They took the decision they were going to make the best wine in the country. They also decided they were going to stay small in order to reach excellency. Hila went to Australia to study winemaking and in 2002 they opened their winery. They settled in the house of the ancestors of Barak. Five generations ago, in 1882, his family had arrived here from Romania with a group of other Jewish pioneers. They had purchased land from local Arabs. The families struggled to work the rocky land and many became Ill, Ill from malaria. The land they labored was on a plateau, a height, with several natural water sources. But the last hundreds of years, the local population had done nothing to properly evacuate and use the water. So the heights had become a malaria-infested swamp and many adults and children died. Many families left, but in 1883, the French baron Edmond de Rothschild came to rescue the remaining families. He invested in preparing the land for vineyards and he brought the know-how in making excellent wine from France. The name of the village was changed from Zamarin to Zichron Yaakov, meaning remembering Yaakov in memory of the father of the baron. This is how Barak's family became involved in the winemaking business. Barrett inherited the fertile land on the heights that are called today the Ramat Hanadif, meaning the benefactor's heights, called after men who helped the country to develop. So if you come to the lovely town of Zichon Yaakov, you can come and visit the winery, meet Barak and Hila and bump into their children. They own 50 acres of vineyards. They sell three quarters of their harvest to big wineries and they keep one quarter of their best grapes for themselves. This way, they manage to make the best wine from the best terroir. The soil here is deep, the climate is hot, and the Mediterranean varieties they grow, like Syrah, Carignan, Cabernet Franc, do very well in these conditions. They cut the grapes by hand, press them traditionally, and transfer the wine during the aging process with buckets instead of electric pumps. 
in the first years they produced 3000 bottles per year. Today they produce more bottles but deliberately chose to stay small and to remain in control of every step in the winemaking. Most of their wine is sold directly from their home. Their wine can be found also in the best restaurants in Israel and a few other countries like the US and Japan. When you come to Israel, we can tour the country following the history of Hila. Of course, we will visit her winery, but we can also visit Beit Keshet, the kibbutz where she grew up. And we can combine the trip with a visit of archaeological and historical sites, visit other wineries in the Ramat Hanadif region or further in the Galilee, and end our journey with a visit of Yad Vashem. So, I hope you enjoyed this little movie. You can contact me via Facebook on the account Private Guy Jerusalem Leontine Cohen Pauka. Private Guy Jerusalem Leontine Cohen Pauka. A big thank you to my editor Shlomo Cohen and see you next week for another movie. Bye bye.